Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Season 3 of Gravity Throttle Racing. You're here at Chavano Mountain Raceway for an exciting new season of racing rallycross style like none other. I am your host, Air Intake, along with my co-host, Richard Gear. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. 34 drivers have showed up to race this challenging rallycross course, starting at the very top, at the Double Eagle, all the way down through Mesa Butte, which you're looking at here, and it continues down to that runway in the distance. We have a Joker Lane, two of them. As the cars will navigate, this is the Joker Lane, slightly longer. Back and forth they will go, down the hill. But the two main lanes will jump the train for extra points if they time it just right. Through the S-turns, they will join up with the Joker Lane as they zoom onto runway three for Chavano Municipal Airport. Down they will go, around the big U, at the north end of the course. Cars will circle back and continue into the north end of the Chavano River Canyon as they will make their way past the finish line to find out who is going to be season three champion. We begin with the time trials. The first 11 drivers are ready to attack the course. They will have one and only one opportunity to post a time for the pole position. The number 11 car has already witnessed some drama as their front scoop is scraping on the jump. But the crew at Team Puff Racing work tirelessly and their car is ready. We are going to be watching not just fast cars, but cars that have to challenge the skills of the technical course of the Chavano Mountain Raceway. Take a look at season one champion, Captain Yasumura. He comes in at a light 34 grams. But when you look at his front and his rear weight distribution at 46% and 54% at the rear, maybe that's the secret behind his beautiful drifting. This will all be a learning experience for our 34 competitors and their teams as they attempt to capture season three championship of Chavano Mountain Raceway. Are you tracking? And our very first driver is Marco Polo from Puerto Rico, driving for Los Brothers in a 1984 Audi Sport Quattro. And this is it, Aaron. Season three is just about ready to get underway. Marco Polo hits the accelerator and down over the Chavano Creek through the snow. He's looking very smooth. The right-hand turn and onto Mesa Butte. Good drifting, hits the wall a little hard. Split time at 10.31, that is really good as he makes his way around the S-turn onto runway three. Accelerating now through the second split in a 19.27. Onto the scrambler he goes. He's spinning around through the finish line. 26.45. Very well done. And the action continues with Sam Hall from the United States driving a 1970 Ford Escort at 67.5 grams with DRT 3K Racing. Sam has looked excellent during the practice rounds. Let's see if he can haul it to the finish line in the fastest time, looking very good up top. Onto the Mesa Butte. Oh, he's overcooked the drift and is backwards. Through the first split in 12.4, he'll have some ground to make up. Chasing it down the highway, looking fast, 21.88. Still needing to make up time through the U and onto the scrambler. He flips the car. But he's through in 28.62. Up next, we have Piggy Talil driving the number two 1998 Subaru Impreza. Weighing in at just under 63 grams from Monster Motorsports. And the practice runs. Well, Piggy has been very aggressive on the track. Watch how she attacks the course. She's really flying around that right turn and now on to Mesa Butte. Oh, spins around, comes through the split in 9.7. That's super fast, but she's lost the momentum. And here she goes on to runway three. She's at 20.6 and now on to the Scrambler holding it well. Coming through with a 26.78. Nice run. And now. Introducing in count from the Chase Family Racing, driving a 1970 Ford Escort RS1600, weighing in at 
58.1 grams. And in count has been looking consistent here in practice runs. As he makes his way over the creek, through the snow, he's looking quite good again. Right turn onto Mesa Butte. Oh, he spins the car, but he's through. 9.94, quite well. Keeping his momentum. Let's listen to that engine as he just cruises along. Looking strong and through the finish, 26.12. That is fantastic. And now our very last entry into our competition was Wally Champ, and here he is, the New Jersey driving team, driving a 2003 Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution at 38.7 grams. He's a lightweight. Watch him go. We totally underestimated Wally, as in one of the practice runs, we watched him clock in the 26 second range. Here he goes now, right turn. Oh no, he spins the car, but he has recovered. A very respectable 10.22 split. And now on to runway three. 20.49, once again, clocking well, onto the scrambler. He gets turned around. Comes through in a 27.89. I'm sure he wanted a little faster time, but well done. We've watched the first five out of the 11 for today. And here's where they rank in the pole position. Aaron, to me, the drivers are coming in too hot at Mesa Butte. They're making it hard on themselves with that drift. Let's see if Daddy G from G-Force Racing, Diecast Racing, will take Richard's advice. He's driving a 2018 Honda Civic Type R at 69.5 grams. And this is the type of car that Captain Yasumura drives. Daddy G is making his way beautifully around the turn, out of the snow. Oh no, he's overcooked it. Now he's backwards. 10.77 split. It's really hard to navigate backwards, but Daddy G is cruising down the runway. In reverse. 20.76 seconds. Come on, Daddy G. He flips the car, spins it around twice through the finish line. 27.12. Let's go to instant replay. Are you tracking? Now that is how you finish forwards. And next up we have Boxer from Olsen Racing Driving. A 2008 Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution at 40.4 grams. And you may recall, Boxer participated in Season 2, driving the same car with modified suspension. Wonderful drift turn, 11.57. He's got some time he needs to make up. Down the runway he goes. 22.66. He might need a slightly bigger engine. And now on to the scrambler. He takes it methodically through the finish in 32.26. We have three Porsches in the competition, and here's the first. A Porsche 1979, 928 at 61.6 grams, Red Line Salvage, driven by Terrence Jr. Terrence Jr. was doing well during practice runs on his drifting. Let's see how he does here. A little hard into the wall. Uh oh, he's backwards. He came through the split in a 9.44. Let's see how he can navigate backwards. Daddy G ran down the runway and backwards. And here goes Terrence Jr. Oh no, he's stuck. Wait a minute. He's now forwards. 20.73. Now on to the scrambler. And through the finish line, 32.58. Probably not the run he wanted. Next up, we have Alex Pez, driving a 1970 Ford Escort RS1600 at 55.4 grams. B-A-K-E Racing. Alex has been consistent as well in practice and has looked good during his drifting as he makes his right hand turn out of the snow. On to Mesa Butte. Really nice job controlling the car, 11.04. Let's see how he does now down at the lower section. His second split time is 21.464. And now onto the scrambler. He's keeping control of the car and through the finish, 29.86. Ladies and gentlemen, 
meet Dude Race Walker. Driving for Diecast Dude Racing, a 1970 Datsun 510 Bluebird at 66.7 grams. Aaron and I don't know much about Dude. We hope this Dude is legit. He's looking fast now as he gets on to Mesa Butte and drifts. A little hard into the wall, but a 10.21 is excellent. Nice control through the S-turns. As he scurries down the runway in 20.16, he's looking very strong. Around the big U. Uh-oh, he got turned backwards, but through the finish line. Very well done in a 27.08. And the final driver of Heat 1 is Jeremy Rodriguez, driving a 1974 Mazda RX-3 at 67.9 grams. He drives for Team Puff Racing. Jeremy and the Team Puff crew were able to get their front spoiler removed and look at them fly around the upper section of the course. Oh wow, that was quite a circus act, but he is through the first split in 10.55. Nice drifting now as he gets on to runway three. 20.25, looking very good around the big U. Oh, he got spun around, but he's maintaining, maintains control. 28.12 for the final run of the day. That's been some fabulous time trials. And here we stand with the pole position so far after the first 11 drivers. It's worth noting, if you go back to season two at the qualifying, it was Ewan McLightsaber, the bottom qualifier, who became our champion. There is the second heat. There is the third heat. Ladies and gentlemen, are you tracking?